Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi, so we begin chapter one, kinematics, by introducing the notion of scalars, vectors, and vector algebra. And one thing I want you to keep in mind when we do this is when we introduce the notion of a vector, we do it without reference to a or particular coordinate system. And that's important, and we'll touch on that later. Okay, so in mechanics, we have two types of quantities. We have scalars, or just numbers, real numbers for us, positive, negative, or zero, and vectors. So what is a vector? For us, we're, our notion of space that we live in is going to be a primitive, undefined concept. So a vector is a directed line segment. So if you think about that, that means with that definition, it has two characteristics, a direction and a length. So in space, let's take two points, P and Q, and let's look at the line segment from P to Q. And that's a vector. The length or magnitude and the direction is what import what's important in this definition. Where it is is not so crucial, so I could move P and Q around as long as I maintained the direction and the length, and it's still the same vector. And that's an important idea. So notation for vectors, well, we need to settle on something. We could have PQ with, a ve with an arrow over it. That makes a lot of sense. It's a bit cumbersome. We could have A with an arrow over it. I don't like the arrows. Or we could have a Roman A with a line underneath it. That's what I use when I'm lecturing on the chalkboard or the whiteboard. Or we got a bold-faced A, bold-faced Roman A, and that's what I'm going to use in this book. Okay, so we want to introduce vector algebra, manipulations with vectors. So how do we add, subtract vectors, multiply them by scalars? Well, the first notion we're going to have is equality of two vectors. What do we mean by that? Vector has length or magnitude and direction. So two vectors are equal if they have the same direction and the same length or magnitude. The negative of a vector, you can guess what that means. If we have a vector a, the negative of a is just the vector with the exact same length but the opposite direction. We call it minus a. The sum of two vectors, now this is a big deal. We use the head-to-tail method of adding or a graphical method of adding or the parallelogram rule. So let's take two vectors, a and b. And a plus b. So we take a. The, the head is the on, on the vector a that I see here is the end without the arrowhead. And the tail, or the end of it, is the one with the arrowhead. So head to tail, we want to add b to a. So we take the head of b and add it to a. And then... The sum of a plus b is the new vector that we obtain by taking the tail, by drawing the vector from the tail of a to the head of b, once we've added a and b in this way. And it's called the parallelogram rule because you can see that a plus b is the diagonal of the parallelogram whose sides are the vector a and the vector b. And you can do this for any number of vectors. I'll let you work through this. Uh, I have five vectors here. And I add a plus b plus c plus d plus e, and I get the dot dashed line below. And that's an exercise for you to try, and you'll get more exercises. So the difference of two vectors, a minus b, 
we just add to a the vector minus p. And I have some wording and gymnastics about that, but you can, um, you can read this, and you can also add to a this vector with the same length or magnitude in opposite direction and see that they add to zero by the parallelogram method or the head-to-tail method of adding vectors. Now the product of a vector in a scalar, c, we'll call a scalar c, take a vector a, we, we denote the product by c times a, or sometimes people call it ac. I usually almost always use scalar on the left, vector on the right. And c is a number, positive or negative. We need to look at its absolute value. And c times a is the vector with magnitude of a multiplied the same direction of a if c is positive and it's in the opposite direction if, if c is negative but its magnitude is c, magnitude c times magnitude a and if c is is zero then c times a equals zero one thing i didn't say is just above when we're looking at the difference of two vectors if a equals b then a minus b is the zero vector the zero vector has length zero but it doesn't have a direction. Its direction is undefined. We just call it zero. And the context will be clear whether it's the number zero or the vector zero. Okay. Now, the notion of a unit vector comes up a lot. Um, so unit vector, what is that? It's a vector with unit length or length one. So any non-zero vector can be turned into a unit vector just by dividing it by its length or magnitude. So I'm going to use a notation that you'll get used to, I believe, pretty quickly. If I have a vector a, the length or magnitude I'm just going to define by a without boldface, or I could put vertical lines around it. it. Kind of looks like absolute value, but this is the definition, it's just the length of the vector. So this is a unit vector corresponding to the vector a. It's a vector of unit length, check it, and it's in the same direction as a. And these are very useful. So the only thing distinguishing two unit vectors is their directions because by definition unit vectors have length one and vectors have two quantity qualities length and direction and i say it over and over but it's going to get tricky when we start doing manipulations with them later on and you always need to keep that in mind okay that's it for this lecture next time i'm going to talk about how we multiply vectors Multiply two line segments? That sounds weird. Anyway, see you next time. Bye.